All right, I wanted to hop on here and do a trade recap of quad witching. I know there was some fuckery going on that day. It was really hard to trade for most of the day. Just straight, really big chop swings up and down. Um, but I want, I did end up green after taking two losing trades and then I finally caught the end of day run up. So I want to just go over what my game plan was going into it and how I traded it. So here's my game plan on the day. So I had NQ gapping down overnight and continue to sell off into six hour and 30 minute demand. It also broke the new macro uptrend line from the lows. Um, this did line up this uh, six hour and 30 minute lined up with the 70% golden pocket fib retracement from the very lows. Um, so I was going risk off. I wasn't gonna size in too big or anything. Um, and then going down to the, so this was the macro chart. So you can see here from, if you draw your fib level from the bottom to the top, we are literally hitting right before open, right at the 70% retracement. So this is usually a good area to look for a bounce. And I figured we were also pretty extended to the downside without much pullback. We did have a drop base drop right here, uh, but we were on our second leg down. Um, then the market likes to move in twos. So if you're on your second leg and you're getting to the end of it, what's gonna happen? The price is probably gonna reverse. So I said the two hour trend is obviously down. We have made a new low. So the rule says to look to short for, to look for supply to short, but breaking my own rule um, due to us being at the daily slash weekly golden pocket and with quad witching, I believe that bounces of demand can be valid too if we see strong volume and momentum come in. Ideally, the market makers will want the 3,900 strike puts to expire worthless. So don't be surprised if we get a big rally at some point today. May not happen, but should be something to be aware of. Um, I also have one hour supply at 2070 or 12 70, 12,070. And the volume profile shows a volume shelf right above at 12,000. Uh, so these are my two areas to look for shorts or target longs. And we have 30 minute demand at 11,800. That also looks goo, looks goo for a possible bounce. We'll, watching be, we'll be watching these areas for a reaction. And then I did note that on ES here, we had a nice volume node literally right at this 30 minute area. You can see that here. Volume nodes tend to act as tough support and resistance. So I was anticipating a bounce down here. Um, if I were to take ES long, it would probably look for it at 3866 demand. And NQ had the exact same thing. This one bar right here that aligned with the beginning of this 30 minute zone, which was at 11,806. So 11,800, I, I believe was gonna be where we bounced at. And then I also had VIX in a key supply area. So I knew that for any more downside, we would have to break above this zone right here. And we hadn't been able to break it recently. You know, we wicked five or six times. So that was my plan going in to the day for me and the team. So let's start it. Um, I don't have my zones drawn on this chart. Uh, this is just a plain chart, but we will see. Remember, we're looking for bounces at 11,800. So let me just, I'll mark that. Remember, we're looking for bounces down here. So this is the 15 minute candles as well. So here's what I saw and what I took. There's the replay tool. Oh, there it is. Get out of here. Okay. Big sell off into our area we're looking to long. Another big one, but this is looking good and there's lots of wicks. And then we did have data that came out right after these two candles. And then we got this massive rally candle on high volume. So what I did here was I knew that news was coming out and I knew that we were in our zone that we wanted to take a trade out of. So I waited, I let the news play out. And as soon as we broke, the high of the previous 15 minute candle, this is where I went long. I think my entry was 11,843, so maybe a little bit higher, but I, I, I just made sure that it held, and this is where I went long. Yes, your risk is, I mean, 
your risk has to be under the low. So it's about 60 points. So slightly larger than I wanted, which is why I was risk off a little bit smaller, but I saw the volume coming in and we were breaking the previous swing high on the 15 minute, which is the previous 15 minute candle high. And we were bouncing out of the zone that I thought we were going to bounce out of. So this was perfect. So we got in there and then we held. Next candle, we pulled back basically to my entry, but I saw this as more of a rally based rally because we didn't even retrace more than 50% of this large green candle. So once you get um, candles that are retracing more than 50% of the candle, then it starts to look weak. But like this still looks extremely strong to me. You know, we're still holding the highs and basically flagging at the highs. And then we had such a good push. I thought this was going to be the rip, honestly. So I did not scale at the pre-market high, which looking back, knowing that it was quad witching, I think holding for a big momentum move was probably not the, sh not the best. I think you'd be a little bit more conservative and you know scalp your 100 points you get or whatever this was like 60 points from entry here um yeah we entered like right here so it was like a one and a half to one ish trade um but i was definitely looking for more so once we got this candle pushing really high i put my stop under this previous red candle okay so my stop turned from 60 points to about 10 to 15. And as you know, we ended up getting stopped out. So we got stopped out there. But notice that the volume on this huge wick, on this huge rejection up here was not very high. To me, if that was really strong selling coming in, you would see a volume spike like this. Like this to me looks like buyers are strong. Sellers are not that strong like this. There was no spike. I mean, it was a tick higher than the previous volume, but it wasn't strong. So I would not be looking to short that. And that's another thing too, that I've been practicing and it's been working really well is I have a bias on the day. So due to either the two hour time frame or the daily time frame or what I'm seeing on those charts, I will be looking long or short for the day. And I only take those trades. I don't switch. I don't short and long. I don't know. I just do one way. So we saw that I was like, okay, 11,800 is still holding. The VIX was also still holding. And so I just kind of patiently waited. And I took another long right here. Took a long here because this was the pullback in a possible uptrend because we're making a higher low now. And volume is coming in. We did break out of this range to the downside and got bought back up right into it. So that shows me that buyers were like, nope, we don't want price this low. This is also hitting my zone again. So I took it long here at the close of this candle targeting, you know, the high day at hundred points away and we were risking about 30. So about three and a half to one. So next candle comes in. I'm like, oh yeah, this is it. This looks beautiful. You know, we're breaking out of this type, this kind of thing right here. I was thinking, you know, this is perfect. I think this looks great. See, you probably should draw your line like that. But I was like, oh, this is it. You know, we get the lower volume into it and then we go. So I was up about, what, 40 points again. And the next candle we got stuffed. But I'm holding for my target. So there's really no good place to move my stop to. So I kept my stop there. I held, you know, I was still trusting it. And then I got stopped out on this one. So small, small loss on the first one, a little bit bigger loss on this one. So now I'm just like, all right, just patiently waiting. Cause the VIX at the same time was just consolidating, consolidating and testing support over and over and over. I'll show you. This was the VIX all day. So this was the level I was like, all right, this is going to break right here. This is going to break. We're going to fill the gap. It's going to be perfect. Came down. So this was in the morning when I, when it was, when I went long, I was like, all right, here we go. It breaks it. Nope. Keep, got to pull back. This was the second time I got long. I was like, all right, here we go. This is where it breaks it. Didn't work. So I go back here. Let me go back to the replay. We were right here, right? So I just got stopped out on my second trade. Now we're waiting again. 
I'm like, okay, I don't really see any like volume signals or anything down here. We're just chilling, we're waiting. Come on, you can do it. This is where I got long again due to the volume coming in. Now, I was seeing that the VIX was falling. This started to, this was holding. And so this is creating, you know, like a sloping downtrend triangle basically. And I know that it could either break to the downside or the upside, right? But since the VIX was not breaking supply, I did not think that this could break to the downside. So I needed the VIX to break to the upside and this to break to the downside in order for this to be invalid. I also kind of saw a inverse head and shoulders or like a double bottom too. So you got your bottom here, you got your other double bottom. So double bottoms. And then on the 30 minute, I saw like an inverse kind of hammer at the low right here. So I'm thinking, okay, this looks strong. And so I got in, had to sweat a little bit, uh, but I ended up going long here and my stop was down here. You know, and I was going to target at least the high day, at least 11,900 up here. So this is another like two and a half to one trade. So we got a little bit of a pullback underneath this previous support right here, but we got bought up. And so that was like, okay, this is good. This is great. Just consolidating still, just sweating a little bit. And then we finally get the move. And so this is the breakout volume, breakout candle. So this is where the momentum starts. This is not where, where you should take profits. This is the momentum starting on the next leg because we broke out of our range. We broke out of our chop. And since we chopped for so long, this is gonna be a big move. Do not sell right there. This is your breakout volume. You wanna sell on the next volume or at an area that makes sense like the high of day. So now I'm up you know, 38 points in profit. I'm like, all right, here we go. This is it. We get our retest, which is totally normal. You could even add to your trade here. Um, that, that's what I should have done if I was smart was, you know, when we pulled back to retest the trend line was get long again, but it was risk off. So, and then we get this other one up. Um, I did scale one at 11,900 and I was holding the others. And so we got the 11,900 up here uh, because I figured that would be an area, you know, we, where we could reject, you know, this is where we have a huge wake up, you know, up top. So I scaled one there. And then we get this fucking massive candle. And so I called out to the team to scale some at 11,938. I don't know if I have the actual Here you go. From our team right here, I got another scale at 11,938 below yesterday low a day. And this was going straight up. So this is the GIF that I sent. GIF, GIF, I don't fucking know what it is. I'm too old for that shit. But 11,938, we kept going. And dude, look at that fucking, we almost nailed the top. We were four points off. So I scaled one there and that was for, you know, fucking 107 points. And then I had a runner that I was targeting 12,000 with. So I was hoping for, you know, another huge fucking leg up. Uh, we got some pullback, some consolidation. I moved my stop on this last one to under this red candle. Cause this was the previous like swing low basically. So on my runner, I would either get stopped out for a small profit or we're, it's going to be a huge fucking profit up here. So we did start getting some moves up. And oh, well, that was the end of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, right here. Yeah. So I ended up getting out right at the end of the day. Uh, we didn't really go anywhere else, but I didn't want to swing these. Uh, I don't want to swing a mini. Still working on my swinging. So I actually bought. Uh, five micros on ES to swing into Monday. And then as you know, after, when the day played out, we actually got a big push at the end of the day. So didn't quite get to the 12,000, but 
nailed an exit at 11,900 because that was a psych number as well as an area that we previously rejected. And then we nailed basically the top of this exit, 11,938 right here because that was below yesterday's low a day. And so that's usually an area of support and resistance as well. So took a loser, loser, and then this winner made up for all of it and ended up about $2,000 on the day. So that's what I saw. That's what I played with the team. We fucking killed it. Uh, we've been actually doing super well. So let me know if you guys are interested in joining the course at all. Um, I can send you some of the info. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you're able to make some money on that, this shitty fucking day right here. God, look at that. Those fucking market makers just trapping everybody. And so, going into Monday, here's my plan. We're still in a downtrend. But, look at this volume right here that we have on NQ, on the type of candle we have. For this reason, I'm only looking for longs on Monday. Same with ES, high volume, hammer, longs. Um, SPX actually shows it really well. Look at that vol Look at that insane fucking volume on SPX. The last time we had this volume at the lows was right here and we gapped up and ran. So again, here's another high volume hammer at the lows, we gapped up, ran. Here's another one, high volume hammer at the lows, gapped up, ran. So that's what I'm hoping for is going to happen Monday, and I will be looking to take longs for that. This is also the top three stocks. This is Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. I like it better than uh, adding in Tesla and Google as well, because Tesla tends to do its own thing. It doesn't always follow SPY. Um, but the NASDAQ is not going to go anywhere if Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon are not going in the same way. So I would definitely look for this to follow through because that volume is fucking massive so that's the plan uh going forward this also showed a really good breakout too of the top stocks so uh yeah that's it so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you around